Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with a review of Mayfair Witches Season 1, Episode 1. Um, I'm so excited about this series because like I said um, in my interview with the vampire video, this immortal universe looks like it's turning out to be something very interesting. So if you're new to this channel, this is where we review television shows uh, with an eye towards screenwriting, filmmaking, um, and a lot of more kind of substantive stuff. So we also all have a really great Kiki. So sit back and let's talk about the Mayfair Witches. So when I first started like watching this or whatever, I have to say that, you know, I think they, they did a very fantastic job with this pilot. I know some people are like, eh, it wasn't really giving me a whole lot. But the truth is, you know, Interview the Vampire just was a cut above, right? Because we had already seen the kind of movie version, we kind of knew what the heck was happening, and it was just like high key fabulous and just gave us our life. Like Mayfair Witches is gonna be like more of a slow burn, you know? Like we're gonna like, it's, I feel like it's gonna have some good moments, but I'm not expecting me to catch my life all the way like I did with Interview with the Vampire, just because you just ain't gonna have that, right? So, but I do like the fact that they are building this universe and we know based upon, you know, some of the Anne Rice books that there's gonna be an intersection between both two shows. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Like, I have not been excited about something like this since like when the Avengers came out and the Marvel Universe first started to, you know, germinate and kind of like explore. So I'm really excited to see that. So let's get into it because not a whole lot happened in this pilot, but a lot happened in this pilot. First of all, this pilot did what it needed to be done, right? So when you think about pilot episodes and what has to happen, you have to create the world, set up our protagonists, introduce our antagonists, show us our stakes, you know, show us our objections, show us, you know, show us some character flaws. And this pilot episode really did everything it needed to be done um, as far as the first pilot episode goes. Um, so we start off and we meet, you know, this doctor who shows up to this house in New Orleans who's giving this woman uh, a Thorzine shot. And he's and the maid is like, oh, we need to give him, she need, you know, she needs her shot. They get upset but she don't get her shots. Bob Bob to boo. But the doctor's like, well, the doctor's like, well, let me go ahead and, you know, read her file first. So we're, and so we, the viewer, are looking over his shoulder, reading the file, seeing that like this person's had delusion, suicide, whatever. And we're like, ooh, okay, what's going on? Then we cut to immediately to the bay, right? So now I'm thinking like, is the woman in the chair? Like the woman who we seen on the boat, like what the time sequence is, right? And using flashback episodes, you know, flashbacks and episodes is very tricky because it can be sometimes a very lazy way of telling a story, but as we continue to watch this first episode of Mayor Fairy Witches, they do a very good job of really integrating and melding the timelines together so that the viewer really gets the idea of what's happening without being so heavy handed about it, right? Uh, it's kind of like the same way with voiceovers, right? When you have a show or a movie that starts off the voiceover, I immediately go, oh my God, you know, just show me, don't tell me. So Mayfair Witches does a really good job of showing, not telling, and also hiding exposition and, time, and really good time stampings. For example, when we meet Rowan's mother on the boat, and we're trying to figure out like when is this happening in relation to whatever's happening, because this is a boat, the boat could be for whatever, we know it's happening in the, in the Bay Area, when she goes, oh, the Uber driver asks, why does this doctor live in a boat? We're like, oh, boom, this is happening in the present time. We're still gonna put a question mark on when, uh, what's going on, uh, who that lady on the, on the deck is, but we know that this present story with this lady on the boat is happening in the present time. So then we meet Rowan Fielding and her mother. Um, there she's a doctor. We feel fine. We find out all of this kind of in the disguise exposition. Exposition. Then we find out that Rowan is performing a surgery and she's very competent. She knows what she's doing, uh, but she's a woman in a in a male dominated you know work environment. And when she when when her surgery is co opted by the chief of surgery, he doesn't listen to her. Um, almost loses the patient. So after she kind of navigates this tricky thing, right? She we then go down and she finds out her mother, her cancer has come back. Okay, we're like, okay, raise stakes, we see what's going on. Then we get a flashback to this little girl doing a confession in the booth, 
talking about how she flipped off, you know, a uh, nun, and she talked back, she lives with her aunt, and all of this, and she's like scratching, and there's this man she's referring to, who, you know, she sees, and she has this affection towards, I was like, what in the what? And she's like writing a name with her rosary, and the name is Lasher, right? And at this point, we can't figure out, at least I didn't know whether this girl was Rowan, who this girl was, whatever. But we're just on the show. We're just, I'm like, on the journey, right? So then we get back to Rowan. You know, her mom's, you know, has this cancer. She goes to, she goes to see the chief of surgery and trying to get her mother um, in, involved in a trial study with this company who she saw the, the CEO with at the beginning of the surgery. And she literally much offers herself to be in servitude for this company in order to get her mother involved. And the, and the doctor's like, eh, I don't know. You think you're too right, really giving her the business. And she gets really, really angry. And we see this special effect of her just being very angry, going literally into his brain. And we see a little slit in his artery in his brain, a little blood comes out, he collapses. So we're like, oh, okay, she's giving people aneurysms and shit, right? Now we go back to flashback. So now we go cut to um, Louisiana, right? Still not sure what the time is. The cars are old timey, but you know, that's the South where people drive old timey cars and think they're like really cute because they call it vintage. So we, then we meet the child who's Deidre, who lives with her aunts, she's in school and they're coming outside and like roses are flying all around. And then like this guy's, you know, the guy who she's been talking to is in the distance or whatever. And you really get the sense that like there's some like low key grooming going on, right? So anyway, her aunts like rush her back home, lock her in a room, and then the voice starts talking to her. You find out that Deidre's mother committed suicide, so that everyone thinks, and, but she was fun and that she lived in this house. And then we find out that the voice is like, well, when you used, when your mother used to be locked up in her room, you know, she used to take this dress and go down and see her uncle. Door flies open, door flies open, one plus one. Girl takes her hot ass down to see her uncle, who's hosting like, a, like another New orleans -y party, okay? Played by Harry Hamlin, who's Cortland Mayfair, okay? But I couldn't get the sense whether he was good, whether he was evil. Once I see folks playing with snakes, that's usually my sense. That's some like devilly, demony shit. So I'm always like, mm, giving you the side eye, right? So then he's like, the butler's like, the gentlemen are here, right? So the gentleman shows up and I was like, oh, little Corbin's about to have him some side dick or whatever. And he picks this guy named Patrick, was like, whatever. So then Deidre shows up and her grow, looking grown as fuck, hot in the ass at this party. And then she drinks some champagne as the, and the uncle's like, nah, 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 you get the good stuff. You get some wine. I'm like, ooh, okay, what's going on here? But you know, it's New Orleans. Folks grow, folks grow up really, really fast. If you ever watched the episode of Golden Girls, you know, Blanche says it's the heat. Dorothy said it was the gin. That's the Golden Girls episode for you, T. So anyway, so she's there. Here comes Patrick. Patrick, he's like, oh, go dance with Patrick. So Patrick's like, my friend from the other room told me to come dance with you. And I was like, did the uncle know DJ was coming? Is he talking with the voice too? Like, what is that whole situation going? Anyway, hot in the hot in the ass Deidre dances with Patrick, gets her swerve on, she's drinking, she's liquored up. Immediately, Catholic girl, school girl, who's been begging the who's been begging the little voice in her head to go and like blow her back out, she's fucking Patrick. So then she goes from fucking Patrick, then it's a whole mass, then we see some claws, and we're like, oh Deidre girl, you fucking a demon or the devil. You a hot, you a fool, fool, fool. So anyway. As this goes on, right, then we go to Rowan, and she's now showed up to her indentured servitude job at this drug company to get her mom on the trial. The CEO is one of those kind of like patently, you know, very, you know, those kind of like bullshit CEOs who try to like give you the rah, 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 but you know they're only about money and don't really care. So he sees her, talks to her, takes her in her office. He has like one of these nice, oh, like um, Art Deco offices. He's pointing out his Rodan and whatever. Goes to P, A with the door open, B doesn't wash his hands. And then it was like, oh, you a skis or whatever. And tells Rowan that she needs to pick a person off the list, 
right? And just put her mother on it. And she's like, I can't do that. He's like, it's just a name. She's like, this is these are patients. If my mother saw me doing this, she would drop dead right now. He's like, look, girl, I don't hire you for your moral perpetuity. I hire you for your medical profession. Pick a name. Don't make me go through all this rah, rah, rah with you, right? So she's like, well, I don't know. And he's like, you know what? I was wrong about you. Why don't you and your mama just get the fuck up out of here? So then she gets mad and just that, that little vein that she did for old boy, she went ahead and did it, boop to him. Now, in the meantime, when the first instance happens, she goes to her mother. She calls the mom and was like, hey, this happened. I don't know. I think I caused this guy to have this aneurysm. Mom was like, quit talking about this shit, girl. You know I got enough troubles. I don't need all of this imagination and shit or things that are going on in your world for you to be talking about this shit. He's like, but mom, she was like, look, I don't want to hear about it. I'm about to die and go on to glory. That's the last thing I need to worry about. She's like, fine. Mind you, the mom, she sends him on. She sends, she sends her way to go get a milkshake. The mom pulls out this card and calls the number. Was like, hey, I need to talk to the agent assigned to my case. Bop, bop, boop. I think something's going on. The woman's like, did something happen? She's like, I don't know. I need to talk to my agent. I need to talk to the agent and find out. She's like, he ain't here right now. So now we know, and the mother says, I need to see something happen in New Orleans. So now we get the sense that the mother kind of knows stuff about Rowan's past, but she ain't telling her, right? So we, most of us who are like sophisticated, we're like, okay, she's like not telling her to protect her because there's something, but we really don't know what the mother theoretically is protecting her from. Until we get the flashback, we know this flashback of Deirdre, who's now whole ass pregnant, sitting up in the house, because she don't punch Patrick, who coincidentally died the next morning. So now I'm thinking, was he part of some sacrifice with the uncle to kind of like, he was in league with Lasher, and Lasher's like, I need a body, let me jump in this boys or whatever, because Patrick is dead as fuck, right? And Deidre's super pregnant. So now like, she's super pregnant, and she's like, pray with me. He's like, I just want to get out of this house. And the priest is like, I don't really fuck around with your family and all this shit anyway. The only reason I'm really here is just because like, y'all be good throwing some good coins up in a church pot or whatever. But I really ain't trying to fuck around with this like domestic shit y'all going on. So anyway, the priest offers her to pray. She's like, I don't feel like praying. He's like, you know what, girl, you, your baby, your aunts, I'm done. I'm covered in the blood. It's you the one that got to worry about. So the priest leaves, and then this voice is like, so, so she goes outside. So she decides that she's going to try to, like, jump out the window, too, like a mama. And Lash is like, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh, you uh, 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 you're being a little dramatic here. Why don't you come downstairs and we'll have a little chit-to-chat and be whatever. So she sneaks her whole ass pregnant self downstairs to the special room while her aunt is on the, or, 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 like, by the bed trying to plead the blood over whatever shenanigans that she, her daughter, the, um, DJ that got herself into and time, my Lord, I hope we don't have to do what I think we hope to got to do it. I'm like, oh, Jesus, please don't kill the baby, whatever. So anyway, in the interim of this, Rowan's had her bad day. She goes to see her friend, the bartender, which I was like, oh my God, it's old boy from P Valley, Mississippi's husband, who, you know, we hate all, if you watch P Valley, you know, that's one of the people we love to hate, Derek. Derek from P Valley. And I was like, oh no, not Derek. But now Derek's not beating people up and doing all racist shit. He's just a bartender in the Bay Valley. So like, okay, Derek, we'll fuck with you. Anyway, bartender Bay was like, get him a beer. She does a shot. She's like, well, you couldn't, you know, what are you doing? Why don't you come hang out with me? He's like, well, I got a date. She's like, okay, bitch. I didn't know begging business. Takes her beer, plops it, on the top of, you know, and another guy's like, ooh, I don't accept drinks from strangers. He's like, why don't you get me out of here? She done told, she done told Derek, bartender bitch, I'm not in the begging business. This puss don't have no, don't have to have no lines. So then we cut to her in bed with the bartender who says, I can't believe you brought that other one home. So Rowan done pulled double dick duty, right? She done fucked the guy from the bar and done fucked the bartender because the bar don't close till two. So she done went, Fuck that guy and fuck the other one. I was like, you know what, girl? I can't be mad at you. Hard times. You got cancer. You giving people aneurysms. Do what you got to do, right? I'm not judging. I'm not throwing stones from my glass house. Ain't like I've never done it before, but I'm saved and I don't live there no more. Anywho, so she done pulled double dick duty, whatever. 
Mind you, we go back to Deirdre. She's in her secret salon with Lasher, who I'm just going to call the devil until we find out he's not the devil. Because this Lasher is just knowing. We're like, girl, we know this is the devil. She's like, show me who you are. Do you want to know me? She has this necklace with this key on it. He's like, well, your mother bound me to you by her choice. Now, I, now it's your choice. And he's like, show me who you are. His face starts turning all these different types of ways or whatever. And he's like, I'm a demon. I'm a saint. I'm nobody. I'm this. Do you want to buy me? So she takes the necklace off before he shows her. Then afterwards, she does. He's like, well, now you're my witch. You're whatever. Okay? Then he's like, oh, by the way, this baby's about to come pretty soon. Anywho, baby, you know, she sees Lasher. He disappears. She starts to go in labor. So then we go back. And we find out that we see that one of the gods that the, her field, that the, the agent assigned to the case is this guy named Sipion Green, who, if you don't know, if just from watching Queen of the Damned with um, Aaliyah, I'm assuming this is the Talamasca people, right? The people who are like in charge of overlooking all the magical sorcery shit that's happening in the world. So he shows up with his gloves kind of surveying the scene and then he's like talking to Deidre's mom, or to Rowan's mom. I was like, what makes you think something's happening? I need to know something's happening. I'm about to be gone soon. I need to make sure she's really safe. So he shows and goes by the house. He has his gloves. He touches the gate and literally he sees like Lasher and with this woman who I'm thinking is Deidre's mother. And he was like, ooh, okay. He's been here. I don't know where he is yet, but I wouldn't get too alarmed but I think some issues up and I'll look, you know, and I'll look after your girl. Right. Anyway, we keep doing that. So then we keep going. So now we're at the situation. Deirdre's mother is about to pass. Deirdre's just, you know, really beside herself now. She's like super sad, you know, whatever. Then most of the rest of the story happens with Deirdre and this baby, because now the baby starts to come. It's a girl. They cut the umbilical cord. And the aunt's like, oh, let me go take it to see the doctor. Girl, the aunt like runs to her limousine, takes the baby, gives it to who we now see is Deirdre's mom and says, change the baby's name. Y'all can't be Mayfair's no more, whatever. Thank you, Aunt Colada. So now we find out that, that Rowan's mother is related to her because she's in the family, right? And they took the name, whatever, because this is like the devil's baby, whatever. And then we say, Oh, what's the baby's other name? Oh, Deidre wanted to give her, Deidre wanted to name her Rowan, right? So now we know that what we're seeing in New Orleans is actually a flashback to how Rowan actually came to birth and her pure, her leading edge and all this stuff, right? Now, mind you, the doctor is still looking through the files. He peeps out to see if the patient's okay. We see Lasher. We're like, oh Lord, what's going to happen now? So he comes out with his vial and his syringe is like, look, I don't think this shit's on the up and up. I don't think I'm going to give you your shot, but I'm going to keep coming here every week. And I want you to tell me what the real tea is going on here. And I'm just going to pretend I'm giving you a shot every fucking week. Okay. So then we see her. She looks okay. And I'm like, I don't know, doc, if that's the best way. Maybe you need to stay out these motherfuckers business. Because if the priest don't want to get in this business, I don't know if that's the best thing for you to be trying to jump in their business but whatever so anyway this kind of episode ends kind of on that the uh, kind of on that point to see that the woman in the ch on the porch is actually deirdre who is actually rowan's mother um rowan still has no idea rowan's in c so then we the final scene is rowan is at c her mother's died all this stuff happens and then back at the agency the old crooked cross-eyed lady is like uh-oh red alert red alert lashes on the move so now we find out Lash is on the move. Where's he on the move to? Child, he's up in like Deirdre's boat, okay? Deirdre wakes up and there is Lasher. And I was like, girl, I don't know, right? But it really set up all the things that we needed to get set up. It gave us our stakes. It created our world. It told us, you know, who our antagonist was, who our protagonist was, some supporting characters. And this really looks like this is going to be a really great show. Um, again, not a lot happened, but a lot did happen. Um, but I think this was a really good episode. I don't think you should compare it to Interview with the Vampires because Vampire, it is just a different beast of a show, like I said. But I think this was solid. Like, I would give this just a solid B, 
you know, and, and I think that it's going to exceed expectations. So I'm expecting it to be better and better and better every week. And that's why I want to review it weekly so we could take this because you know what? I've been wrong, but I would like to be surprised. So anyway, thank you guys. Uh, watch the show again. Um, don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the alert. And I will see you guys next week or actually on Sunday, probably Monday for episode two. Okay. Bye.